Hello everyone, back to tuning in to today's second video. We're going to have a look at the ECM WF extended model for today's second video. This is your 30 day slash 42 day European outlook. And I should get on with that for you in a moment. Just say that first video release today was our 6 a.m. UK weather forecast. We've got a 10 to 14 day coming up for you later on today as well. Please like, share, and subscribe on all today's videos and content. And thank you so much, everyone, uh, for uh, doing that. Thanks so much to ECM WF. Thank you so much to ECMWF.int for supplying the charts as well, by the way. Thank you so much, uh, EC. Right, we're going to start off with the week one mean sea level pressure anomaly, taking us from the 7th to the 14th of August. So we've got uh, low pressure this week in the Atlantic, and this low pressure is moving into northern and western parts of Europe as well. High pressure ridging up from the south and from the southwest into much of southern and also western and central parts of Europe. And there is a little bit of blocking uh, away to the north as well. The jet streams sort of rising northwards in that kind of direction. 500 millibar heights looks a little bit like this. So we've got below average heights in the Atlantic and into Northwest Europe as well, some above average highs, some higher pressure down for Spain and Portugal. So that's where the driest worst weather is going to be in the south and southwest of Europe with lower pressure. Not necessarily low pressure, but lower pressure in the north and in the west of Europe. So this time the temperature anomaly is looking this week. The coolest uh, anomaly is over on the eastern side of Europe, actually, from Poland to the Black Sea and down to the Balkans. We see temperatures 3 to 6 degrees below average through there. Also extending into southern parts of Scandinavia as well. So we've got Denmark, southern uh, Sweden and also Norway with below average temperatures, but further north it's warm and average in central and northern parts of Scandinavia and the northwest of Russia. Around the Baltic Sea states of Latvia, Estonia and Lithuania, it's a little bit cooler through there as well. Out west it's warmer, so Ireland a little bit above average, western parts of the UK also a little bit above average, although South East is a bit cooler than average. Much of France, Northern France coming out cooler than average, the South of France coming out warmer. And uh, particularly warm through Spain, Portugal and into North Africa. That's where the heat is uh, really building. That takes us down into the Med, of course. So, from the Bally Aracons back to Spain and Portugal, it's... Uh, <coughs> Excuse me, mostly hotter than average. From the Bally Aracons eastwards, though, it's cooler than normal through Corsica, Sardinia and in towards uh, Italy as well, below average temperatures through there. And through into the Greek islands, so uh, it's a bit of a mix. Uh, western parts of the Greek islands may be a bit on the cooler side. Eastern parts of the Greek islands tend to be a little bit warmer. And then that warmth extends up through Turkey towards the Black Sea as well. Precipitation-wise, we look like this. So the wettest weather is across Scandinavia, looking particularly wet through Sweden, Norway, and down into Denmark as well. We also see wetter than average dish through the Baltic Sea states of Latvia, Estonia, Lithuania, northwards towards Finland. It's a little bit mixed, drier in the south, a bit wetter in the north and the northeast. And then most wetter conditions just extending into the far east of Europe as well. So uh, eastern parts of Ukraine, for example, coming out a little bit wet and down into the Black Sea too. Elsewhere, though, it's relatively dry. So much of the Mediterranean, as you expect, this time of year, drier than average, also pretty dry through southern parts of France and toward northern Italy and at north was into southern Germany. Uh, we see the low countries, Belgium, Holland, Netherlands coming out dry on average too, as does the UK, although western parts of Biden a little bit wetter. There's quite a bit of rain in the Atlantic, but it's going to be threatening, I think, to, to move in to the UK and Ireland later on in the week. Week two will be the 14th to the 21st of August. So above our high pressure, above average pressure generally just covering much of Europe actually, lower pressure is out into the Atlantic. That's probably going to be drawing up a southerly wind, I would have thought, at the western side of the Europe there. 500 millibar height shows that we've got weaker pressure in the Atlantic with this white area, but higher pressure generally covering many central and eastern parts of Europe. Again, we bring up those winds from the south once more. Temperature anomalies next week are largely above average in many areas, hotter than normal, 
Um, yeah, exceptions. So we've got um, western parts of um, uh, Spain and Portugal, a little bit cooler free there, maybe. We've got southwestern parts of Britain, northwestern tip of France, a little bit cooler, maybe. And again, over towards the east part of Europe, a little bit cooler through there, um, just south of Black Sea, and once more towards some parts of Scandinavia, could be a little bit cooler. They are the exceptions to the rule, though. Most places are actually hotter than average through next week. Looking particularly warm again through eastern parts of Spain, Portugal, in some parts of France, and into Italy as well. The uh, far north of Europe, going towards the Arctic Circle, looks uh, very warm. Uh, as well, actually, with temperature, temperature anomalies of around 3, 6 degrees above normal. And elsewhere, just widely above average, really most central and eastern parts of Europe, warm and average, back towards the UK and Ireland, a little bit above average through there as well. So quite a warm week under that ridge of high pressure coming up next week. As well, precipitation is concerned. So wetter than average for Ireland and possibly into the north and west of the uh, UK, western average into the far north of Scandinavia. And perhaps the far northwest of Russia could also affect some parts of Finland and possibly a bit on the wet side through eastern Germany to Poland. Again, maybe exceptions to the rule, though. Most places looking pretty dry, very dry through these eastern parts of Europe, but just southern Europe looking quite dry. And into the northwest, it looks largely dry than average in most places as well. Right, week three will be the 21st to the 28th of August. Um, uh, higher pressure moving over towards the eastern side of Europe, then. So lower pressure starting to appear through uh, the Mediterranean. Otherwise, the signal seems to be weakening. 500 millibar heights, though, doesn't look much different, with above average heights covering much of uh, Europe, actually. Temperature anomaly is just widely warmer than average by week three, so most places are above normal by about one to three degrees. So, pretty warm week coming up there. And as far as precipitation is concerned, um, again, also a little bit on the wetter side, just in the far northwest, Ireland, UK, north parts of Germany to the low countries, probably Denmark and Scandinavia, and probably up towards Finland as well, looking a little bit wetter than north. The driest weather seems to be down in the southeast, of course. So it looks like we've got a bit of a northwest southeast split, really, but precipitation with, with these areas rather wet. And uh, these areas are looking uh, a lot drier, I think. Week 4 will be the 28th of August to the 4th of September. Got some lower pressure in the Atlantic then. Weak signal, higher pressure on the far eastern side of Europe. 500 millibar heights, quite a weak signal. So um, there is still uh, a ridge over on the eastern side of Europe. Could this area be starting to get influenced by uh, lower pressure? Let's put in uh, a question mark about that. And as far as the temperature anomaly is concerned, still was pretty warm in most areas, especially southern parts of Europe, but also up in the north and in the northeast. While well, most places coming out average to above normal. By the fourth week. Does look a little bit on the wet side though. In the far northwest. Again we've got quite a bit of rain in the Atlantic. Some of that starting to affect Ireland and the UK. And just into parts of Scandinavia as well. Driest weather seems to be in the far eastern portion of Europe. Right that's the first day look ahead done. But let's go for weeks five and six data before we go. Because why not? So week five will be the fourth to the 11th of September. No real signal in this week um so let's move on to the 500 millibar height anomaly that shows some above average heights into the far north of um europe there temperature anomaly is again average to above average in many places but possibly a bit of a hint of cool down through west europe most, most notably maybe just there across the northern parts of france but down to squint to uh, make that out and um, precipitation again it's a very weak signal but could be hinting at something a little bit wetter through these western portions of europe and lastly week six will be the 11th to the 18th of september Again, a very weak signal, some low pressure down towards Spain and Portugal. Otherwise, not much to see from a mean sea level pressure anomaly perspective. 500 millibar heights, again, showing some higher pressure towards the northeast of uh, Europe. Otherwise, 
quite a weak signal, temperature anomalies, largely average is slightly above, and precipitation anomalies, um, again, no real signal can be gleaned uh, with that, to be honest. So, a mixed bag there from the uh, ECM, definitely the uh, strongest signal is uh, is earlier on, so it does look as though things are going to be warming up across much of Europe by the time we get into uh, next week, and also drying out a little bit as well, maybe back to more unsettled conditions for the north and the west by the data stages of August. Then into September, it does all look um, really quite uncertain, I think, tonight or today. Um, right, that's it. There's just a snapshot of what the model is showing. Look, could look completely different. We'll do next week's extended European outlook. We will look at this model again next Saturday morning with a UK and Ireland focus. So uh, make sure you check that out. And, uh, and yeah, we'll see what Molly is showing then. We're going to be back later on. If you enjoy the video, please like, share, subscribe. Thank you so much for doing that. Going to be back later on with your 10th morning day. So check that out later on this afternoon. For this one, though, that's all for now. And thanks for watching.